to my uh, knitting vlog. Uh, this is episode 24. And if you're a returning viewer, welcome back. And if you're new, uh, I hope you uh, will enjoy the content. It's all about knitting. <laughs> and uh, what I've been, uh, what I've finished, what I've been, uh, what I'm knitting on and uh, well, uh, some, no, no plans. There are no plans. Today there are no plans. <laughs> Um, if you're the first, uh, I say, how you <laughs> okay. Um, if you're new, um, I'm uh, Marlene and uh, I live in the Netherlands uh, near by the beach, so hence the name Sunny Seen It. And uh, we love the sea and the ocean, and uh, actually. If it's not the winter time, we're actually every day on the beach almost. And um, it's only a five minute walk. Uh, and also the dunes uh, are five minute walk. And um, yeah, that's it about it. I, I uh, live here with my family. We have two beautiful uh, children. And my eldest is also knitting already. So it's also nice to see. She has her uh, knitting basket already. Um, but <laughs> let me just start uh, with what I'm wearing. Uh, I wear the sock cardigan from Lieflings van Eve, and um, it's a very, very beautiful pattern. And I finished it finally after six months. <laughs> I saw uh, it's um, uh, knitted with the Jamieson Spindrift on a 2.75 millimeter needle. I did because I couldn't get gauge with 3mm needle uh, because spin drift is a quite thicker fingering weight compared to the recommended yarn and the recommended yarn is the Durable Socks and uh, I knitted the sleeves in a size 2 <laughs> and the body in size 1 uh, and here I just try to match it up with each other uh, so I wouldn't recommend what I did, just stick to one size. But when I started with the body, uh, I thought it was too wide. And then I uh, talked to uh, Eve from uh, the, the, well, the designer and she, and, uh, she said it's okay just to combine it uh, because uh, at this part uh, it's almost the same. Um, so that's what I did. <laughs> I will show you a little bit by standing up. So this is the sock cardigan and it really looks very, very nice. And um, what else can I tell you? Ah, uh, <laughs> sorry, I needed to think. Uh, for the cuff, I knitted 50 rows and uh, for the, the hem, 40 rows. Uh, and this is really uh, advised as well in the pattern. And you can adjust the length um, by, how you say, knitting more pattern on the, uh, on the bottom. <laughs> on the lower side, I would say, but no. Uh, th that's a Dutch uh, immediate translation from Dutch, Marlene. <laughs> um, other things that I thought were a little bit difficult because you do short rows at the back as well at the end. Uh, and uh, you have the Raglan uh, decreases, Raglan decreases, uh, but you don't do that in the neckline. And I thought, you see it already, it's a little bit, how you say, standing up straight. So maybe, but I haven't blocked it yet. So maybe with blocking, it gets better. But maybe I would do a little bit of decreases as well in the neckline. And um, I got these beautiful buttons. Can you see them a little bit? From um, Floor van den Oever. That's also a Dutch lady and she has uh, a website as well, uh, bon, Atelier Bont en Blauw. Um, and of course, <laughs> I forget the whole thing. I sticked it, so I cut into my work. Uh, I will show you also at the end a little bit 
construction, how I did it with the sewing machine. Uh, and um, normally I do a stick sandwich and that's actually that you knit, uh, how you say, kind of uh, a BA band or a sandwich around uh, the, the, knit, uh, the cut part. Uh, the ones you, how do you say the cut part? No, the part that you have cut with the scissors. Uh, but now I uh, immediately uh, did the bottom band and at the back I also knitted, yeah, the light is a little bit getting worse. I knitted, um, how do you say, stockinette and then an I-cord bind off and then I sewed it by hand. But you can see that a little bit, you can see a little bit, um, how you say, where I put the thread for the, uh, by hand to uh, adjust the I-cord bind off. But yeah, <laughs> those sort of things, it's really, of course, I think that we are, uh, uh, that knitters are more prone to see all the details because we're really close on the work. And we're not very, very, uh, well, we're very, very uh, critic, critical about our work, I think. Uh, <clears throat> so I think by wearing, I will forget. <laughs> and I really didn't want to adjust it again. Uh, and I'm really happy with the results, actually. Um, yes. <laughs> So uh, in hindsight, would I do things differently? Maybe I would recommend different yarn, but I really, me, I enjoy non-superwash. But if you buy the Jamie Spindrift uh, to uh, 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 knit this uh, beautiful cardigan, um, because the pattern is also in English, by the way, uh, then I would really recommend to make a swatch and be sure to have the right uh, needle size for the uh, that you really get gauge. Um, let me see. The colors I used are this is espresso, then black. Uh, uh, these are the coffee ones, so also in the stars, coffee ones. This is tundra, and this is acid. And Oh yeah, and in between I used Mochit. So that's it actually. Right. And otherwise, uh, please check my referee project page. Uh, in my uh, Instagram you can see a link uh, for the YouTube, the pattern and also uh, the project. And then you can uh, immediately click and see also uh, the pictures of this one. <laughs> And then uh, I, uh, I described all my uh, colors by number, which I used. Um, yeah, but that's about it. Oh yeah, and for the bottom band, I didn't, uh, the, the pattern said every four rows pick up three stitches, but I did every three rows, two stitches uh, to get it more even and not let it fade away. Because I say to uh, let it, um, be more straight and otherwise sometimes it happens that it gets a little bit like this you know like uh, a fan or something yeah <laughs> i'm sorry i don't know how to explain it well um then my other project <laughs> which i'm also very very happy with it's the moraine sweater Ta -da! Uh, it's from Tink and Knit and i use malabrigo rios uh, it's knitted on a five millimeter needle and Malabrigo Rios isn't a recommended yarn and is also, I think, uh, too non superwashy for really color work. But my children really adore, adore the softness of the yarn. And uh, I still had some in my stash and I thought, oh, this is so cute. And my uh, eldest, she, uh, yeah, she actually wants to wear this sweater all, every day. So I thought she needs a second one. <laughs> Um, so today she's going to fit it uh, and to see if it's the right size. Otherwise I can still adjust it and make the yoke a little bit longer. Um, but yeah, so cute. Um, yeah, 
And I think, uh, uh, so the pattern continues with all the stars, uh, like this. Yeah, or stars, it's more like snow uh, underneath. And then there's also some color work uh, at the end uh, and also in the sleeves. So that's what I will do because I have uh, a little bit more white uh, and the blue. I have enough or just not enough, really enough. It would uh, fit me also well. <laughs> No, it's really for the, uh, for uh, my daughter. She really loves blue a lot. Uh, then it's getting darker here. I'm going to put on some. I'll put on some lights. Uh, then I continued with the chestnut cardigan from uh, pattern by Marie Wallen, and uh, <laughs> I uh, I haven't made it. I haven't knitted that much on it, but just to, sh to show you some progress, it's very, very nice for me because it uh, um, stimulates me to get more progress ne next time as well. Uh, so this is the <laughs> chestnut cardigan and I already knitted it, but uh, I made it too big and now I'm already continuing uh, with the pattern. So uh, almost halfway for the first part. Um, of the pattern because there are two pattern repeats so yeah I used the British Breeds uh, bought it in a, a yarn shop in Amsterdam the Afstap um, and it's knitted on a 3.25 millimeter needle it's fingering weight it's very nice <laughs> it really this this yarn really smells like sheep very nice <laughs> And I now knit uh, in the size M. Um, oh yeah, by the way, the, the Moraine sweater is knitted in a, a size XS for my daughter. And she's eight years old, but she's quite uh, a tall girl. So that's why uh, it's already XS. Um, then my failure project. Uh, it's not uh, that I... Um, yeah, well, I didn't swatch and that's also, I always have some difficulties to swatch or not to swatch. <laughs> and this time I just wanted to feel uh, how you say to knit something beautiful and just to start and uh, to feel the my knitting mojo again. So I started with the Moby sweater from Petite Knit and it's knitted on a 4.0 millimeter needle. I used the... A uh, double Sunday from uh, Sunday's Garden, for, also from Petite Knit. But it's normally knitted with mohair and it's too small. This is the size large which I knitted, but only when I stretch it a lot, then it would be the correct size. So I'm not sure if this will block out or not. And I actually wanted to ask you, because maybe someone of you already knitted this pattern and know if it's really how you say that if you block it aggressively that it helps but i think i need to um, frog it and to make a 2xl with this yarn i really don't understand it because i have the correct gauge but i think maybe i need the 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 cables a little bit too tight or something i'm not sure so if you have any advice about this uh, please help and otherwise i'm just going to frog it and to make it a little bit bigger i also have peer gint uh, the yarn for this project that's a little bit thicker so this is 50 grams for 100 meter and peer gint is 50 grams for 90 meter so Probably I would get a more correct size with pure gint. So I'm still in doubt if I just am going to maybe let this hibernate and then start with the pure gint and to see if there's a large difference or not. Or maybe you have some good advice for me right now. Yeah, because it's so pretty. <laughs> yeah. 
But I also, I would like to have it a little bit oversized as the pattern recommends as well. And uh, this is supposed to be on your arms because this is already the beginning of the sleeve as I have seen it. Um, yeah, well, okay. So maybe uh, if someone ha has advice about that, I would love to hear that. Um, but otherwise it will be frogged eventually. <laughs> Um, oh, I forget to tell you. Sorry, I just uh, I already recorded the Dutch version version, and uh, I now see it. Uh, I have a very handy uh, device to help uh, me for the correct position of the buttons, and that's this one. I don't know if you already know it. I got it from my uh, sewing class. My uh, teacher um, has it. It's uh, if you're in uh, uh, it's a Dutch. Uh, website she has ansjehandmade.com and uh, then you can position <laughs> the buttons so uh, I also used eight buttons to get uh, the correct height of the button on my bust um, because otherwise it gets torn too much if you put your arms to the back uh, but this device helps you with it <laughs> So maybe if you also like it, it's good to uh, search for it. And it's, uh, how you say, the, uh, it has this package. The, uh, it has this, how you say that? <laughs> it, it comes in this, uh, uh, how you say, package. And Simflex Expanding Sewing Gauge. I hate it. Yeah. It's called... Um, but the other thing that I want to discuss is the Woodfolk sweater from uh, Petit Knitter. Yeah, Petit Knitter. Yeah, sorry. I always have to think because Petit Knit and Petit Knitter, they are uh, so similar <laughs> with names. Um, I haven't been knitting on it that much, but uh, I only need to... Uh, I already separated the sleeves and I now need to only knit the body and the sleeves and I will do some knitting surgery uh, on the top because I don't like uh, this neckline that much. It can be a little bit wider for me. Uh, so maybe I will do an eye cord bind off on the top. I still need to think about that. Um, but it's already very, very, very pretty. <laughs> Yeah, it's very beautiful uh, color work already. It's uh, knitted on a 3.0 millimeter needle, I think. And I use the uh, alpaca header from Manos del Uruguay. Uh, it was gifted uh, to me by Edna. Very, very uh, kindly gifted. <laughs> and um, yeah, so maybe... <laughs> Maybe if someday I have finished it. Uh, the plan was actually to finish it before this start of the winter, before uh, the 1st of December, but uh, that didn't work out for me. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's too busy with all the other uh, projects I have. And I also wanted to tell you, because my mittens are online, uh, my first pa pattern, or actually my second one, but... Um, uh, more like the first uh, accessorized uh, pattern uh, or yeah, it's not a garment <laughs> it's more accessory uh, so there are mittens I don't have them now with me I'm sorry I will put on a picture otherwise uh, you can find them on Ravelry uh, and also I will put it on the link down below uh, and already uh, it has been sold um, uh, already and so I'm very, 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 very grateful uh, how with how many, how much enthusiasticness. No, <laughs> sorry. I'm very happy uh, and grateful um, how many people already bought it and uh, are very enthusiastic about it. And um, uh, yeah, it's it's overwhelming to see how. Uh, good it has been received and um, it's actually supposed to knit up your waist yarn especially fingering weight so uh, I held uh, the, the two strands of fingering weight together 
and uh, but you can also use the decay if you have some leftovers with that and um, um, yeah it's uh, what I how I wear it especially now with the cold days in the Netherlands uh, I just wear the mittens and then uh, so they're fingerless mittens and then I wear other mittens on top of it so then it gets pretty warm and when I'm too warm I just uh, get off the top layer and then I still have gloves on so I don't get that cold hands I really enjoy that <laughs> and it's so funny because I I just made those mittens for myself because I had some leftovers and then a friend of mine she said you really need to write this pattern uh, and put it on Ravelry because uh, yeah I would like to make it as well <laughs> So that's how it started and then in December I thought yeah well I'm just going to do it I'm just going to make it and uh, put it online and uh, it's so um, wonderful that it's been uh, received that well yeah very nice so I'm uh, at the end of my uh, podcast uh, vlog <laughs> I'm sorry I don't I think podcast is a nicer word than vlog vlog yeah I don't know why, but I like podcasts better. So I, I think I will just stick with podcasts. So this is the end of my podcast because most of the times when I am uh, watching vlogs, I'm knitting. So I'm actually only listening. So it's more, I say the functional use is more that it's a podcast. <laughs> yeah. Um, I would like to wish you... Um, uh, uh, happy knitting time and uh, thank you so much for watching and uh, thank you also so much for every like that you give on the videos uh, that also stimulates me to make more <laughs> of course and um, I would uh, like to wish you a very nice day very nice evening and a very nice night uh, I started saying that because somebody said, yeah, well, you say have a nice day, but I watched it this during my night shift. So it's actually, it's supposed to be, uh, uh, you should wish me a, a good night. <laughs> and I thought, oh, that's funny, actually, just to say, have a good day, have a good evening and have a good night. Um, and I hope to see you next time. I don't think I will record every week because I'm very busy now with work and also with uh, everything in life. Uh, but I will not stop recording, of course, and uh, um, there will be an episode in like two or three weeks, uh, probably. Okay, well, bye!